aqibatun lil muttaqin wa la udwana illa ala al-zalimin wa ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah al-malikul haqqul mubin wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan 'abduhu wa rasuluhu sayyidu waladi Adam ajma'in sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi tayyibin at-tahirin wa sallama tasliman kathira amma ba'd we continue on bab al-kafa'a the chapter of alternative excuse me, adequacy and alternative which is all connected with the chapter of nikah the chapter of marriage <coughs> as we continue in this tremendous book on this tremendous day of the first day of the hijjah which is, agrees likewise on Sunday, August the 12th 2018 which agrees and coincides on the hijri calendar which is the first of the Hijjah, Am 1439, the Hijrah of Mustafa alayhi salatu wasalam. And on this tremendous great day of the Hijjah, as one of the best great deeds that we can do in these days, no doubt, I would say, is to take ilm. Taking ilm is the best way, or one of the, one of the best of righteous actions that one can do in these days. Is one augmenting and increasing himself in ilm, a shari, which inshallah be the law which we're doing right now. We were talking and discussing in the chapter of what they call Bab al Kafa'a, adequacy and alternative. And we were discussing the first affair or matter in regards or connected with this matter. So, what you call al Kafa'a, a diniya. For one, we talked about the first condition, or the first affair, or the first matter, which is number one, al kafa'a fi deen. We said adequacy in religion. That was the first thing we discussed, right, everyone? Adequacy in religion. We said that this particular condition has some what details in it, right? We said that from the conditions is what, in regards to adequacy in a religion, that has some details. It's not general. When we say adequacy, a lot of people think adequacy, of course, means somewhat of uh, uh, not equality, you would say, but adequacy meaning, of course, in certain affairs has to be what we call equivocal, if you want to say, well, for lack of better words, we could say equal in certain matters. We'll just stick with what adequacy for right now, inshallah. But anyway, in regards to religion, we mentioned it said a deen. That is on the aspect of a man where we know that men can marry a Muslim woman and a non-Muslim woman from the kita- uh, from, from Ahl Kitab. That's not equal to what? For women. Because women can only marry what? A Muslim man. She cannot marry a non-Muslim man. A lot of people will say, well, who's going to prevent me? Who's going to stop me? Nobody's going to stop you in this dunya from doing anything. You're free to do what you want in this world. But however, know for sure there's a, there's a reckoning in the hereafter. When one meets Allah, he wants his affairs to be in order when his book is laid out. And Allah Ta'ala will lay the book out and he will ask, why did you marry a non-Muslim man? And for all of us, for all the questions that we're going to be asked, we need to have an answer, which you'll find that the Salaf used to mention. For every question, make sure that you have an answer when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala acts on the day of resurrection. Make sure that we have an answer, that we're prepared. So what is a, so we ask us the, the, a, a person that will say this, like a sister, that who's going to stop me from marrying a non-Muslim man? Nobody can stop you. Rather, you in this dunya, you might find people who aid you, might have facilitated for you. However, make sure that when Allah acts, you have a pre- you have a what a prepared answer. So we know that a, a Muslim woman can only marry what a Muslim man, and that the Muslim man can marry what a Muslim woman, and a non-Muslim woman as long as she's from what everyone from Ahl Kitab, with, con- with the condition of Ihsan, with the condition that she's what. That she's, she's chaste. We know in the UK they say chaste. I think they say both. 
that she's chaste or chaste. Of course, having a conviction and a creed that what she's doing is correct, meaning her ma marrying a man is what is lawful. In regards to what, and like I said, and I'm upon this, upon this firmly, and I want, inshallah, if I was able to translate it, I would, I would translate it. The affair of what the great Imam al-Albani, who was strongly against a, ma, a, a Muslim man marrying a non-Muslim woman, even if she's from the people of the book, of these days, he says, of these days. Why? Because he said during the time of the, of the old, the time of old, the woman, the women from the people of the book, they had a conviction that fornication was haram, it was unlawful. And that the only way that a woman could be involved with a, a man as far as involvement, as far as pertaining to building a family, was with someone she was married to. That was it. No more, no less. And he says, in contrast to the majority of the women of the people of the book of these days, they don't have that belief. They think that fornication or adultery is nothing wrong with it. There's nothing absolutely wrong with it. He said, that's one of the problems. He said, do you find, he says, and I'm asking you because he was asking the question of the great Imam al-Albani, rahimallah. When he was asked a question, he says, in regards to now, I'm asking you this question. He said, what do you find of men that have married, who can marry a Christian woman without being, having some type of involvement with her before you marry her? He said, it's very rare. How do you accept that you will have to what? You will have to be involved with her. You will have to talk to her. You will have to date her. You will have to be around her. You will have to take her out. And you will have to even probably more than likely be intimate with her before you marry her. He says, how many do we know of those women that you'll find that do not, or rather they have this type of involvement before you marry them? He says, rather you'll find is if not the majority are like this. So that was one of the reasons why he said of the women of these days, of the women of the people of the book of these days is not applicable for marriage. And the other different types of reasons that he gave from Kitab al-Sunnah from them was he said that, for example, that if a non-Muslim man was to marry a Muslim woman of the book, he said, you'll find that the Sahaba, who did marry a couple, a couple of women from the people of the book, he said, when they marry them, you'll find that the woman was in the, the state in the land of the Muslims. So the dominance and the influence of Islam was still what? Was still prevalent over her belief of Christianity. Whereas it was still the children, even though their mother was not Muslim, meaning she was a Christian, still the dominance of Islam was still affected. It was still the, the excuse me, the influence. It was still the influence upon the family and the children. He says, you'll find that they migrated to the Muslim country, whereas, like we said, that would be the dominant and that would be the influence. So the children wouldn't go astray. He says, in regards, he says, if you're now in a Muslim land, non-Muslim land, as soon as you start to act funny with a non-Muslim woman, if she takes you to the non-Muslim courts, who are they going to aid, more than likely? Give custody. What do you, and he says, how are you going to give an excuse to the non-Muslims? Oh, she's not Muslim. She's not practicing Islam. She's supposed to follow behind the man. The, what the non-Muslims going to say? They're going to look at you like you're crazy. This is America. Is anybody free? And more than likely, they're going to have and aid her side. Because they believe in what? Liberality. You're free. She can, you're free to be Muslim like she's free to be what? Christian. So you can't use that as an argument to why you want to take your children away from her because you're a Muslim man. So these are all the different reasons of why he said it's not applicable for these days, for the people of the book of these days. And I'm firmly upon that position. Firmly. Of a man not marrying a woman of the book. So you find the great Imam al-Albani that he mentioned that in regards to what? to the, giving the details about a Muslim woman, uh, a Muslim man marrying a non-Muslim woman, she's from the people of the book. However, if, let's just say, there, it was applicable for these days, then we know that the also, the origin is that a Muslim man can marry what? A non-Muslim woman with the condition that what, everyone? She's from the, a woman of the book. That's the also. In regards to a woman, like we said, then the woman can only marry just a Muslim man, and that's it. 
no doubt, as far as where the, the Muslim or the adequacy in the religion, where they agree, as far as the Muslim woman and Muslim man, of course, that we know that they cannot marry a mushrika or mushrik. That a Muslim man cannot marry a woman who's a polytheist. That's absolutely equal on both sides. Likewise, a woman cannot marry a, a polytheist man, and a, and a Muslim man cannot marry a what? A woman who's a polytheist. So that's what? That's equal. That's equality on both sides. So that's adequacy. So now, if, if a Muslim man married a mushrik, a woman who's a polytheist, other than what we mentioned, from the details we've given, is the marriage valid? Is that considered adequacy? There's no adequacy here. There's no religious adequacy. So the religious adequacy is, is mafqood. Once it's lost, then that also takes away what everyone takes away the validity. So now the marriage is invalid. Because there's no adequacy as far, uh, adequacy as, far as what everyone? As far as religion. A person would say inadequate with who? We, we say inadequate or invalid with Allah. And, and, and inad, inadequate with Allah. A person would say, what's the delay? What's the pre evidence and proof? The evidence and proof is in Surah An-Nur, ayah number two. Well, Allah Tabarik wa Ta'ala says in this book, Zani la yinkihu illa zaniya o mushrika. Zani atu la yinkihu ha illa zanin o mushrik. Wa hurri madharika al mu'mineen. He says, a fornicating man does not marry except a fornicating woman or a polytheist. And a fornicating woman does not, no one marries her except a fornicating man or a polytheist, meaning a polytheist from a man. And all of that is unlawful upon the believers. Taib, how in the ayah is, what is the meaning of this ayah? The Shaykh al Islam gave a tremendous history of this ayah. I don't know, it's kind of long because I only got 20 minutes in lecture in the class. But anyway, to make a long story short, 10 minutes. 10 minutes? Wow. Tayyip, what time do we pray? 5.08? What time do we pray, Amir? Like 5.08 was the Iqamah? The Iqamah time? 5.08, something like that. No, talk about the Iqamah. What time do we call the Iqamah for Asr? Oh, we got to, alhamdulillah, we got to 512. Five. So a fornicating man does not marry except a fornicating woman or, or a polytheist with a woman. What does this mean, brothers and sisters? This I. A lot of people think the meaning of it is what we will understand based upon the apparent text, of course. If you go back to the tafsir Ibn Kithir, he's saying a zani, meaning a man that has the belief what he's doing is what is correct. That's the meaning of the ayah. Meaning he has the i'tiqad in the belief. Why? Because once you have the i'tiqad in the belief that fornication is lawful, what does that make you? Huh? What does that make you? Takes you out the fold. The slam, right or right? Right or wrong, everyone? If you believe that fornication is correct, do you have the i'tiqad in the belief? After Allah and His Messenger have made it haram, clearly. As we know, it's established in Kitab and Sunnah, fornication. It's, absolutely, it's incorrect, it's wrong. All the way up to the day of resurrection, regardless of what democrat, democracy says, regardless of what America says, regardless of, of communism or whatever, or, libera or liberalism, doesn't matter. Like we said, everything is about the hereafter. It's not about this world. It's about what you're going to say when Allah asks you on the day of resurrection. Did you implement this. So the most detrimental of affairs is your belief system. So the Muslim has to have the belief that what fornication is what everyone is haram. Let's just say you, you never fornicated in your life ever. But you still had to believe that fornication is, is halal. What is the person's ruling? The fact that he stayed away from fornication all of his life, will it benefit him? It won't benefit him. Let's say you was the most chaste person in the dunya. Never looked at a woman, never, <laughs> the most lowest gaze man in the dunya. Never touched a woman that wasn't your wife. Let's just say you still had the i'tiqad, the belief in your heart 
that what you were doing was halal, fornication was halal. If you did that, then what, everyone? Well, yet with thou, you, your abstination, and also you actualizing, person being chased to the most, ch- chased to the most utmost, still the person is a what? Kafir. Disbelief. After the fold of Islam. Type. Now look to the eye, Surah so Nur, ayah number two. Allah Ta'ala says, no one marries except a fornicating woman or a polytheist. So now connect the dots in the eye. Meaning that a woman who likewise who's fornicating that has the i'tiqad, what she's doing is halal. Likewise, a man that will not marry a woman except a man that has the same i'tiqad will marry likewise a woman who's a fornicated woman with the same what? Belief. Or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what everyone? Or a polytheist. Why? Because a polytheist thinks initially that what? Nothing is wrong with what? Fornication. That's the reason why this ayah was mentioned in this manner. It was dealing about something more deeper than just mere fornication. It's talking about the what? The belief. That whether what a person is doing is what? It's halal, haram, but it's pertaining to a person that believing that fornication is halal. Which will make a one leave the fold of Islam, fall into the state of kufr, which as a result of it, of course, he will not marry a woman except find a woman that's similar to what he believes, a fornication being likewise lawful. And also, similar to that, a polytheist. Because polytheists in most cases, of course, we know, and they believe in their religion, they have no type of what? There is no type of hurma or no type of a belief of, of uh, if you want to say, infidelity in regards to what? These affairs which we're discussing now. So basically, fornication is what, everyone? It's halal. with a mushik. In most cases, they believe it's what? It's halal. It's halal. There's nothing wrong with it. So that's the reason why this ayat was mentioned. It was dealing about the belief system. Is it clear what I'm saying so far, everyone? Also, likewise, as far as in regards to the Muslim, the adequacy, in regards to adequacy, we want, we want to add some more details onto this. So, more, so not only is the, God belief, the, the belief system is the most vital, also, likewise, we also discussed previously in the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ, of what we discussed a couple of weeks ago, for the Prophet ﷺ said, لا ينكيح المجلود إلا مثلا that a fornicated person that was lashed, no one marries, he does not marry except someone who is similar to him. A fornicating man who is lashed does not marry except one who is similar to him. What do we say about that hadith? Meaning, based upon this hadith, it's not permissible to what? For, and I want everyone to add this on to what we mentioned in here, the first category of adequacy in religion. Likewise, along with those details, is the affair of one, one being chess. Why? Because, what did we discuss last week, or a couple of weeks ago, that a man who fornicates cannot marry a what? A chess woman. Until he makes what? Toba. And similar to that, on the opposite side, of the uh, opposite side of the fence, if you want to say the opposite side of the spectrum, likewise similar to that. You can say, what everyone? A Muslim uh, fornicated woman, a Muslim woman, cannot marry a chaste Muslim man until what? Until, until she makes toba. <coughs> why? Why everyone? Because of this condition, what they call kafaa, is inadequacy as far as in religion. It's not inadequate. Inadequacy in a religion. There is a little bit of details in which we'll discuss of certain instances where fisk, fisk as far as in religion, and a, mar- a woman marrying a man who's upon some type of fisk, is, there's slight details in which I'll discuss. We don't got the time yet. Meaning, that, for example, a woman that can't find a, 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 a Muslim man to marry. And for example, the man is wearing his pants under his ankle. 
She can't find a lot of people who will marry her. We know pants being above the, uh, uh, below the ankle is a type of fisk. It is. It's a type of sin. It is sin. Five. Let's just say now that is a type of sin in which he's committing openly. It's a type of fisk. It is. So now the woman who doesn't have a lot of men proposing to her because to the point where she's starting to lose hope of marriage, maybe because she may be, let's just say, for example, she thinks, oh, well, I'm, or, I'm older, nobody's really asking. Uh, or what have you. Nobody's inquiring whether or not I'm gonna marry, my wife wants to marry me. And I'll read what the great Imam Shaykh Uthaymi even mentioned in this regard. He says, in certain conditions, he says, this is the case, then if this woman and a man comes to propose to her, and let's just say he has this type of fisk here. He said, depending on the type of fisk. He said, this, list, this type of fisk here, she could marry him here in this regard. Insha'Allah, in order to what? Overlooking the little bit of fisk as far as his pants, but not, he didn't give the pants below the ankles, but just giving a type of fisk if it's something, my, like he said, oh, this is a major sin, but as far as the fisk under this ankle, maybe I can give something of why I probably saying wearing jeans or something like that. But under the ankles, she marries him, and his pants are below his ankles, then she what? Will marry him in this regard. Of course, if the other levels of fisk have not reached a level where they're of major sins, such as fornication, and also such as, for example, leaving off the prayer and other different things. It, it meaning that they would go back to the judge, which a person would have to look at and really study the issue to make sure that it was something that could be somewhat in certain instances overlooked, in which I'll give the details a little bit later, inshallah. I'll give it to you. What, even what he mentioned it said. But he said certain fisk is not, cannot be tolerated. For example, a fornicated man marrying, marrying a chaste woman. That's, that's a type of fisk that can't be tolerated. Or, for example... A man marrying a non-praying woman. For a woman that's not praying or a man not praying, that's a type of fisk that can't be tolerated. Rather, that will render your marriage invalid. That fisk can't be tolerated. So a woman man marries a non-praying Muslim woman, then we can't even say in other instances she's even Muslim in the first place. So that will render the marriage invalid. That's, that's a type of fisk that renders inadequacy in one's marriage. You can't marry him or her. Is it clear what I'm saying so far? Or, for example, a fisk, fisk of i'tiqad. Let's just say, for example, fisk, disobedience of the belief system. Like a person is upon bid'ah, or is a person he believes that Allah is everywhere. But please, this type of fisk can't be tolerated. So a woman now that marries a man that's with this type of fisk, she can't, can't marry him. Fisk of a man that has a problem in his aqidah, problem in his, in his belief system. That, a man can't marry a woman like that. Or a woman can't marry a man like that. She's not supposed to marry a woman or marry a man, like, or marry a man. Woman cannot marry a man like that, a man cannot marry a woman like that due to the fisk of i'tiqad, of belief. But the fisk of i'tiqad, of belief, can't be tolerated either. All those affairs are intolerable. One cannot tolerate it, and it also renders what they call inadequacy, inadequacy as far as the religion. <coughs> So those type of fisk, like we said, dependent on the level of it. But like we said, he said he gives one instance, and I'll give it. I'll read it. Maybe if I have some time. He said, for example, in certain instances, he said that the level of fisk, like for example, not no prayer or polytheism or deviation, that those are the type of levels of fisk that cannot be tolerated. Or a person leaving off the salah. No one can marry a person like that. And that renders the marriage invalid due to inadequacy because of fisk or some type of what? Sin that the person is involved in. As far as, let's just say the marriage starts out like this. So what if they start falling into it within the marriage? That's something I might have to discuss on a, a little bit later too. Let's just say, for example, uh, a, Muslim, a Muslim chaste man marries a chaste, chaste Muslim, Muslim, Muslim woman. During the course of the marriage, let's just say the man fell into something, or the woman fell into something. Does that render the marriage invalid? Mm. I'll say it again. They fell in, let's just say they fell into fornication, or they fell into adultery within the marriage. For example, two couples got married. They both were chaste. They did it correctly. They did everything correct. They didn't have any dating. They didn't fornicate. They stayed away from each other. They did it through the masjid. Whatever. They did everything correct. 
married for five years. Play. One of them slipped. One of them fell into something. Fell into fornication or offended. Excuse me, not fornication. Fell into adultery. Does that end the marriage invalid? Is, huh? That's what I'm speaking about. Huh? Does that render the marriage invalid now? Just to answer quickly, <sighs> Sheikh Uthameen even mentioned this regard. He goes a little bit de- in details in, this, re- in this, this type of condition here. He said, in regards to the marriage, if this t- took place in the middle, he said, then a person will have to make toba. Does it render the marriage invalid? He said, no. He said, however, he said, why? Because there's a difference between how it starts off and, and how it would take place in the course of. If it starts off like this, it's invalid. Now, if it's in the course of, that's something different. Is it clear what I'm saying so far? We have to ask these questions because, like I said, it takes place especially here. Whoo, whoo, especially here. So. I, I know a lot. I can mention off the top of my head a couple of situations like that now. So all these are matters that, like I said, they're details that have to be given for our people or for, for, the, for the brothers and sisters in order to what? know that marriage, there is a type of adequacy that has to be fulfilled. And, it, and there's a type of uprightness. If, if that uprightness is not fulfilled, then it, then it renders some type of inadequacy as far as in religion. From that inadequacy, like we said, is fisk. And the fisk of, for example, fisk of belief, fisk of leaving off the salat, fisk of fornication and, 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 and chastity, and things of those matters. If those things are, are lacking, where one has not fulfilled them, then then they're, they're inadequate as far as in religion. And at the head of all that is what we discussed is what is a belief, such as a Muslim woman cannot marry a non-Muslim man. Why? Because of the inadequacy in religion. And likewise, we gave detail on the opposite, opposite side for men. Men cannot marry what? A polytheist woman. He cannot marry that because of inadequacy in, in religion. Also, for example... Uh, he cannot marry uh, a woman, a fornicated woman, even if she's a Muslimah, even if she's a, a Muslim woman who has not made toba, that also is inadequacy. She can't, he can't marry her. So this, this affair is a what? It's a consensus as far as pertaining to chastity. That's a consensus. The, a Muslim man can, whose chast cannot marry a fornicating woman, and likewise, a, Muslim, a chast woman cannot marry a fornicating woman. Muslim man until he makes what? Until he or she makes toba. Inadequacy, even like, let's, let's just give another example. For example, a, mo- a Muslim woman marries, finds out a man is drinking intoxicants. Can, they, can she marry him? We say no because inadequacy as far as in religion, because he has a type of fisk. And that fisk that type of sin that he has or disobedience can affect a woman. It can affect her. It can affect her dealings, affect her household, whatever, what have you, right? Rather, because that shows now she's not Lisa. And you find that Ahl Ilm, you'll find in a lot of their lectures, especially talk about kafa'a, they'll say, he a Lisa, or he who a Lisa kuf'an, kuf'an, laha, meaning kafa'a, meaning he's not adequate for her. He's not adequate. What do you mean not adequate? Because, or she's not adequate for him. Why? Because of the matters we're discussing now. And you'll find that in a lot of lectures. So some of them say, meaning from kafa'a. Meaning he's inadequate or she's not, he, she's not in adequate for him or she's not adequate for her. Based upon what we're mentioning now. Is it clear, is, is clear so far what I'm saying, everyone? Based upon these details. طيب. Ten, ten more minutes. Five. The second, as far as what they call, I think he called the event. He called the event. I 
I think he is calling you then. I thought I heard him calling you then. Fine. The second condition is what we discuss. It's called whatever you want. Uh, it's called hurriya. Hurriya. As a matter of fact, before I get into that condition, let me go back again. Let me go back, everyone. Go back to the first one. Type. What is, what is the delil? A person would say, type. With these type of conditions, what's the evidence and proof for this condition? <coughs> You'll find that there is an, a particular narration. where it says on the authority of Abdullah ibn Umar, which is in everyone's book, it should be in there. It's in, it's in Bulugh al-Maram, it's in Bulugh. It says, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم العرب بعتهم أكفاء بعض والموالي بعتهم أكفاء بعض إلا حائكا أو حجاما The hadith of Abdullah ibn Umar, he says that the Arab, that they are adequate for one another. And the free slaves... Or the, or the mawali, or even the slaves, are adequate, only adequate for one another. Except a ha'ik or a hajjam. Except for one who's a ha'ik or a hajjam. A ha'ik is like a type of, uh, so like a type of occupation that the, that the people used to find lowly. Like they used to find it kind of low. We'll discuss that in a minute. You'll find that from Ahl al-Ilm who declared this hadith to be what? To be weak. And the isnad is, has, has a chain and it's a cut in the chain. As the great Imam Sheikh Salih Fawzan that he mentions says about this particular hadith, it says that the Arab, that they suffice or they're sufficient or adequate for one another. And that likewise the free slaves or the slaves or the concubines, they're adequate or they suffice one another. You'll find that from the evidences and proofs, for example, that they say, they use this to say that, number one, this is to show that there has to be some adequacy in one's lineage, meaning that a non-Arab cannot marry an Arab, or an Arab cannot marry a non-Arab, or what have you. Or, for example, a, woman, a person who's an Arabiya cannot marry a person who's a free slave or a slave, or vice versa, or, or, or what have you. However, you'll find that the great Imam, even Sheikh Salih Fuzani, says that this hadith has a weak, extreme weakness in it. It's, he said it's weak. He said, in it is a hadith that has not been named. And whoever's not known, and they're not, and this is not known who they are, he says, and of course, in this uprightness is not known for that, for that reason, we declare that it's not to be what? To be, to be weak. Also, likewise, he said it's munkar. He said this narration, particularly here, is munkar, meaning that it, it opposes all the other authentic evidences that proves otherwise. Why? Because you'll find that there are some Sahaba who married a woman uh, from the Arab who was an Arabiya, she married a non a non Arab. For example, Sul Salman al Farisi. Salman al Farisi radiallahu anhu was a what? He was he was a non Arab. He wasn't from the Arab. He was from Persia. He was Persian. And despite of that, he, you'll find that he married a woman who was, who was, who was Qurashiya. She was an Arabiya. She was from the Arabs. So she, he married her. You'll find a lot of Sahaba, or, or excuse me, you'll find a couple of the Sahaba, excuse me, a couple of Sahaba who are non-Arabs and they married Arab women. So those authentic narrations opposes what? This one here. Due to the fact that were not, they were, there were marriages between non-Arabs and Arab women and, and men so that took place amongst the Sahaba. So this narration is what, everyone? So this one is, is weak and it's also munkar, meaning that it opposes all the other authentic narrations that w as we'll discuss. Also, likewise, so the, number one, so that first part of the hadith is not, we, we said, we, it's not acceptable. Also, likewise, also, likewise, we'll discuss, inshallah, this evidence was mentioned as to show there has to be adequacy in, in the affair of nasab, as far as lineage. Meaning that a person cannot come from 
a lowly lineage so called. We'll discuss that inshallah. It's going to come because we got stopped class already. As we, we're going to discuss. But however, we'll find there are a hadith and authentic narrations where women came from well known backgrounds or well known families. And they married some, uh, they married certain Sahaba and even certain people from the Tabi'een, from the Arabiyah, over the women who are well known in their families. And he, was a, he became a scholar because a lot of people don't realize that a lot of the Mawali, people who are slaves and they were free slaves, majority of them are from the most prominent and the head of the scholars of our religion. From them was Nafi'. Nafi' who was a free slave of Abdullah ibn Umar. And you know that Nafi' who's the who's what everyone? Who's Nafi'? Nafi' is the is the Sheikh of Imam Malik. Nafi'. He was Imam Malik Sheikh. And he was better than Imam Malik. <laughs> Even though he was a what? He was a free slave. He was a free slave. So he was better than Imam Malik because he was a tabi'i. And Imam Malik was what? We know his status. The status of Imam Malik, Malik ibn Anas al Usbuhi, Imam Ahl al Hijra, or Udar al Hijra. Everybody knows the status of Imam Malik. The point I'm trying to make is that a lot of majority of the Mawali, the Mawali who are slaves or free slaves, majority of those who are scholars from our religion all came from that type of background. A lot of them. A lot. You'd be surprised if I brought the book of who was Mawali, who's from the Mawali, from Saeed al Musayyib. Saeed al Musayyib, and a lot of people from who are Trent, name, name, no names. And I hate to, I have to even think from my, what comes to my mind, even Hassan al Basri. And from his lineage, also likewise. A lot of them were Mawali. The point I'm trying to make is you will find that people who are well known from their families marry scholars even though they were what? Free slaves. So, this hadith here saying that this has to be taken in consideration, which is adequacy as far as the lineage, likewise, is not accepted. It's not acceptable. In which we'll discuss, inshallah. Only in if the woman, if it's going to bring a problem in the family. In which we'll discuss, inshallah. If it brings a problem in the family, then, if you look to the chapter, what does it say, everyone? It says alternative, meaning a woman has a choice. So if, if she feels that now I'm being harmed, and she can't take it, because some people can't take harm. My family, now my mother, my father made me an outcast, because that does happen. It happens today, as of, regretfully we say. As, as I've heard stories in the UK, a brother married a sister who was black, married a sister who was Pakistani, the whole family made her an outcast. They Muslim, both of them were Muslim, made her an outcast, so it caused a lot of harm on her. Certain people can take it, certain people can't. There's certain people out there that's weak. Listen, I can't, I can't go on my life. Uh, my mother, father, my sister, my brothers, everybody made me an outcast. I can't take it. So now, can a woman now, does she have to stay in a marriage or does she have a, a, the choice? Here in this chapter, based upon what we're discussing now, what does it say, everyone? It says what in the, ch in the book? Alternative. So now she can what? If she wanted, she could say, I have the choice, listen, I can't continue the marriage. I can't take it. You're a nice person. You're a beloved person. I don't agree with racism. Racism is rejecting our religion. But I just can't go on with my mother and father and my sisters and brothers just maybe, just totally maybe an outcast in my family. Certain people can't take it. That's, that's the reality. Right or wrong, everyone? Certain people are weak. I can't. I can't. I can't deal with my mother and father not talking to me every day. I can't. They're Muslim. I can't. So hearing this, she would probably want to what? Ask for an annulment. Is it clear what I'm saying, everyone? Even though it's wrong, those situations is warped and wrong. But I'm just saying that she, to let everyone know, she still has the what? She has the option. She opted out, khalas, I can't. The nice brother, I don't agree with my mother and father, I don't agree with them, I think it's pathetic that they just don't want me to be married to you based upon your color, or your skin, or your background, or your family, or your lineage, or what have you. It's pathetic, it's disgusting, it's filthy, but I still can't deal with my mother and father, and my sisters and brothers just never wanted to talk to me again. So that she would kindly just depart, and that would be her alternative out. So if she's pleased with that, 
she could continue the marriage. But if she's not pleased, she can what? She could discontinue. And, and that would just be her what? Her choice. As far as her alternative that she made. She can now be her choice. She can now request for an annulment. So she's not stuck. But however, if she's pleased, but however, let's just say that the man did come from this background where it's not a well-known lineage. He comes from a family that's not known. But however, he's a prominent person, from probably from the ulama. Let's just say for example. So we say here, as far as in the religion, it's permissible. Where a person from a well-known family can marry a man that's what? That doesn't come from a well-known lineage. As far as religiously, in the religion, as far as in, in Islam, it's permissible. But however, it still gives her the alternative that if it was going to be a major harm upon her, that she still gives her the opportunity and the alternative to give her a way out if there's going to be a bigger harm. Is it clear what I'm saying, everyone? We'll stop here, inshallah. I'm going to start with that hadith before we started going on. We'll start bringing the, all the other narrations that, a pope that goes against with a lot of these conditions. And we'll bring the evidences next week, inshallah. Isn't that, well, right, next week is the Eid, was it the Monday? Or is the next Tuesday you're talking about? Next Tuesday? Next tu oh, so we can do a Monday. Next Tuesday? Yeah, next Tuesday. Yeah, not this Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Oh, okay. I will stop here. Hello, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, barakah.